Well, hi, welcome to A Watchman's Journal. I'm Diana Larkin, and we are going to do another fascinating interview with Ash West, amazing prophetic dreamer, and John Redenbow has so graciously joined us to provide his expertise from dreamlifedecoded.com. That's where you find him and all his resources. <laughs> so uh, welcome, John. Thank you for joining us. So good to be here. Thanks for having me back, Diana. It's good to see you, Ash. Uh, and it's Ash. Good to be with both of you. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me back. It's an honor as always. Oh, my joy, my privilege to have both you guys uh, in my life and just sharing what the Father is doing this amazing season that we find ourselves in. Um, Ash, you have had another, well, another, yeah, man, multiple amazing dreams that you have been having lately. Um, but I, I really uh, agreed with your choice today. This is a dark and dangerous plan dream. And uh, Ash, I'm going to just have you uh, give it. And then uh, we'll come back on and we'll talk about it, ask you some questions and see what the Holy Spirit brings up. So awesome. go for it and share this. I want to take notes while you talk, if that's okay. You Please. crack on, my brother. Okay. You crack on. Right, so I had this dream on the 11th of the 1st uh, this year, and I had it at 11.55, so noon, uh, which would be equivalent to my midnight because I work nights. So You had it on the 11th of what? Of the 1st, so the 1st of January. So January, the 11th of January. Oh, yeah, one eleven. gotcha. That's interesting. That okay. So I will go from here. So I see a black night sky and it is raining. I see two vehicles which are both black and one is tailing another. There are two lanes on a highway the vehicles are traveling on. The car following was on the outside lane near the separation barrier from the other oncoming traffic lanes. The rain is spraying off the wheels of the vehicle and road. I feel like I'm watching an opening of a movie. I know there is music playing dramatic and thrilling in the background. The vehicle in front is governmental. I move slowly from the front of the car and see the, see the Cadillac badge, then the driver behind the wheel. I then move slowly and see the headlights, then come through the windscreen of the car following. I see a fat man that looks like Robbie Coltrane, which, and I put in brackets, actor, sat in the passenger seat and driving the car. A woman, sorry, sat in the passenger seat and driving the car, a woman that looks like Oprah, but also Jennifer Lopez. The man is the man in a is sorry. Sorry, the man in a focused tone says, Are you ready to do this? The woman looking straight ahead with both hands on the steering wheel says, Yes. I hear the engine of the car speed up. I then slowly move to the right as they go out of view. I then hear two gunshots. I then hear an exchange of gunfire. I now see both the fat man and the woman running up an incline, which has, which has the highway below it. They are really struggling as they run, trying to breathe. They come to a single, big, very thick, bushy tree and are now sitting up against it. The fat man doesn't look like Robbie Coltrane anymore, but Chris Christie. And the woman now ah. looks like F.W. <laughs> All right. Let me uh, just jump in here. Uh, we are going to code uh, some of the names in this just because we want to avoid problems. So the 
I don't think I've ever told you guys. Do you know what my favorite kind of chocolates are? Nice. They're Fanny Farmer chocolates. Mm-hmm. Ah, mm-hmm. interesting. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So, I've never tried those before. <laughs> so uh, keep that clue in mind as the F in FW. Mm, I will keep that in mind. <laughs> Thank you. I know a guy named Willis. I think they were his favorite too. Oh, oh yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. Excellent, yeah. excellent. We hope you're keeping up with us all. <laughs> As they sit under this bushy tree, they continue to breathe heavily. While I can hear dogs barking in the background and a large number of men shouting and communicating with each other. With very dry humor, the fat man is doing something with a rifle and says, I can't believe you messed this up to the woman. He's trying to frantically do something with his rifle while also trying to talk and take the seriousness out of the situation. The woman isn't breathing as heavy as the man, but I can see she's trying to keep as calm as possible, but I know she is really panicking inside. In a direct voice, she is going through questions with the man, checking he has certain things ready and knows what the plan is, like checking off a list. She then says, make sure we direct them this way so we have a clear firing point. The man still focused focused on readying his rifle responds in a calm but direct tone. Yes, my love, if they come this way, we are all in trouble. I am now looking from behind the tree. The man is sat down, leaning against the tree on the right side and the woman on the left. I start seeing searchlights coming from the bottom of the incline. The sound of men and dogs are becoming louder and clearer. The man then says, looking at the woman as there is a flash of light. Are you ready to bump uglies and take these, not a very nice word, out? There is no response from the woman. He looks over at her quickly, then focuses on his rifle again. I then hear the word bleed out, come from the bottom of the incline. What word? Bleed out. Bleed out. come from the bottom of the incline. The woman is now slanted over with her head bowed down, leaning to the right. I hear the sound of the man cocking his rifle. I now see him lift the rifle up and then I follow the barrel of the rifle from a side view and continue down it, moving left. I now hear the men at the bottom of the incline and dogs barking very clearly and see really closely two dogs run past me from left to right. I can hear their collars rattling and some growling. I hear one gunshot. And that's the end of the dream. Wow. Um, Before you said bleed out, was there a gunshot? Um, no, I, I was. You said uh, there was a flash at the bottom of the hill, and then she said, "Are you? You know, he said, are you ready to take these people out?'" Yeah. And then from the bottom of the hill, you heard bleed out, and she slumped over. Yeah. So I'll read that paragraph again. So the man sa- then says, looking at the woman, as there is a flash of light. Are you ready to bump uglies and take these, not nice word, out? And that begins with an F. There is no no response from the woman. He looks over at her quickly, then focuses on his rifle again. I then hear the word bleed out, come from the bottom of the incline. The woman is now slanted over with her head bowed down, leaning to the right. So was it your impression that the flat was a sh- the flash was a shot coming from the bottom of the hill that hit the woman? 
to me, it looked like there was a like a searchlight. Someone with a torch or a very powerful searchlight just went across and it went up and it actually caught them. So it went across them. So I'm standing behind the tree and I see this light come up, up the incline. And I see it like flash, go from my right to my left, come across. So it would have hit him first and then her. Okay. So that wasn't like they were taken... Do you have any idea what caused her to slump over? To me, it looked like a shot. So it looked like she'd been shot, but again, yeah. it was dark. And I, when when I saw him looking over, it wasn't him, me seeing him look over and then me see her and the result of what happened. It was, I'm still looking at him as he looks over and he's like, he's seen this, whatever he's looking at. And then he's back straight away on his rifle, hmm. cocking it, getting it ready. So he's, again, he's aware of the situation, but there's no emotional response to it. Hmm. So he's focused. Yeah, he's very focused on getting this rifle ready. Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, wow, wow. When you're um, the beginning of the dream and you're crawling around all these moving vehicles, like... Um, Mission Impossible on steroids. Um, did you see who was in the governmental car besides the driver? So the first car in front was uh -huh. again black car. Um, I see the, the the headlights first, and it's like I'm moving from left to right, and it's almost like I am holding a camera, and I'm going slowly over the front of the bonnet of the car from the side, which would be the left hand side of the car. So I'm there going over the front badge, the headlights up the bonnet of the car, through the window, and I see a white man, which looks, you know, could be a chauffeur, could be, you know, Secret Service, someone driving um, the vehicle. And then it goes over that car, and it does the same thing again, seeing the water being splashed by the wheels of the vehicle, coming up in a different lane, and then I see these two in the car following, tailing the, the car in front. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But you didn't see who was being driven in that first black no. car. No. Okay. Did you have I any just feeling or knowing of who it, it was? So it just says governmental. Okay. So to me, that would be some sort of administration. Um, I didn't. I, I've. I'm kind of pressed in. I've got a feeling that it's a good. It's righteous. But I'm not going to say, oh, it's it's DJT or uh, another previous administration. I just got it's a good, a, a leading administration, a leading government, governmental okay. vehicle. Okay. So you did you feel like it was the beast, like the presidential limo? It didn't look like the beast, but I got that feeling again that it was it was at the front. It was a a righteous governmental vehicle yeah okay. but it didn't look exactly like the beast that that didn't come across to me and the beast would usually be in a motorcade anyway so yeah and there wasn't a motorcade closely but... following okay yeah interesting wow that means that he's been signaled singled out that mm. the enemy is falling and he's been separated from what his usual protection is at least optically you know um, and I think that just to give an overall feel of this, this is somebody out to make a hit and they have guns, but I don't necessarily think this is about an attempt on someone's life. I think this is about character assassination. Uh, uh, so, um, interesting. yeah, go ahead and jump in anytime you want, John, uh, or Ash, if you've got, uh, more you uh, want to add to um, why do you think I mean we have this woman that's in the car with Robbie Coltrane and later Chris Christie interesting that they keep changing mm. um, first looks like Oprah and Jennifer Lopez which is kind of an interesting combo um, any insight on that well in regards to Let's just this just be very blunt here. God is not politically correct. We know that. <laughs> and I think he's rever referring to the 
shall we say, skin tone for okay. identification purposes in mm-hmm. regards to mm-hmm. FW. So there's there's confirmation there. Okay. Um, the the fact as well with the Robbie Cold train character, um, again, and then moving towards the Chris Christie indicates to me, and this is just me, that there is an acting role whether that is for good or bad or whether he's acting out something uh has a role to play Mm -hmm. in this again i don't know um but that's what come across to me because when i first got it and i'm like jennifer lopez and oprah like what the heck Mm -hmm. (laughs) what does this mean but then it was almost like the lord was showing me the both of them like coming in together and one standing in front of the other and then it kind of seemed through both of them and I was like mm-hmm. ah, ah okay so that's where it kind of clicked for me and he gave me that revelation so and of course both characters that you see the man as are both very heavy set and you know if you know who FW is you can put that piece together with who this might represent um in the it's not free willy dream no it's not free willy just so people know <laughs> we're not talking about a whale here <laughs> an actual person <laughs> oh boy mm, yes you know the first thing i'm struck with is the date 111 um and the first thought that came to mind and 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 by the way it's not that <clears throat> When Joseph and Daniel start interpreting a dream, every time they say, I don't, I don't got a clue. I don't have any idea, but there's a God in heaven that knows, and he will give you the answer. And then they proceed to tell him the answer. Yeah. Um, so sometimes I don't have any idea. And other times I, I, I do. Um, but people have said before, and I've seen it show up in comments, like, why does he say, I believe, or I think, or I feel, um, it's just because there's been such an overuse of this is what God told me. And, and, and it just, I don't know about you all, but there's a whole lot of people that are saying that a lot. And I'm just like, I'm not sure you're even talking to God because nothing that they're saying is resonating with me at all. And they're like, God told me what's going to happen in January. God told me what's going to happen. And, you know, anyway, I don't want to get into a diatribe on the prophetic, (laughs) but that's why I will say, you know, I'm okay with being wrong. Mm -hmm. Like the idea of hearing the voice of God, particularly as an interpreter, is a language. Joseph didn't wake up one day and knew how to interpret dreams. He bombed utterly when he had his dreams. And then when he interprets the dream of the baker and the cupbearer, he made it more about him trying to get out of prison, showing again his immaturity. He accurately Mm -hmm. determined what the meanings of the dream were, but then he spent Mm -hmm. more time saying, hey, hook your buddy up. Like when you get restored, don't forget me and I'm here on just blah, blah. When he gets in front of Pharaoh, he's at his most mature. And so the idea that, well, you got to hear all the time or you're not real or you're not fake simply isn't supported in scripture, particularly Mm -hmm when it comes to hearing and understanding the voice of God through dreams as an interpreter. And you can even see what Daniel went through three years of learning all of the literature and all of the culture of the Babylonians. So God could speak to him about Nebuchadnezzar's dream and having an understanding of the context. So I say it like that to say, um, when I'm in a mode and when we've invited the Holy spirit, which we did before this, as we started, thoughts come to my mind. They're typically not thoughts that I would think. I don't think, huh, 111, that's really close to 11110, which is the executive order that people say was the executive order that got JFK killed. You know, but that's what came to mind. Now, it's not even an exact fit because it's 111, but Mm -hmm. that's what came to mind. And I actually wrote it down, JFK. Um, And so it's interesting that as the story unfolds, this is talking about potentially it's certainly a hit, but likely because there's government plates and assassination at some level. So to me, that provides a confirmation, even though it's a small confirmation, it's a confirmation that, okay, that you must be on track. Cause I've never heard this dream before just now, um, which is always fun and interesting. In some ways I prefer <laughs> it that way. And sometimes I wish I had more time to mull it over. But yeah. So executive order 11110 
um, was when the, when uh, JFK took the money printing power, the money making power out of the hands of the Federal Reserve, put it back in the U.S. Treasury, and they started printing silver certificates. And that went on for, I don't know, three to six months, and then they killed them, and then they rounded up all the silver certificates and destroyed them, and I don't think there's any at all left, if so, maybe as collectors, whatever, mm -hmm. they're very, very extremely rare. So, which to me, what that represents is the idea of it's a money play. Okay. Whatever's about to happen, even the date that you had this is about, and where did you have this dream? I was at home. So where's home? In the in UK, in, in a place called Newbury. Newbury. Okay, is that close to London? It's about two hours, two hours away. Okay, from the main, from the main motorway. Right. Yeah. Well, it's just interesting because when you look at the history and particularly of what's happened in the world in the last hundred, two hundred years, and a lot of the money plays, and even the Federal Reserve, and a lot of the families, and all of that, came out of London, and London is considered the banking. Um, capital, probably the banking capital of the world, certainly the central banking capital of the world. And so again, sometimes God will take you to a place to give you a dream. Um, and so the idea that you had this, you know, why didn't Diana have this? Why didn't I have this? You know, these are always good questions to ask because, you know, like we say before, has it occurred to you that nothing occurs to God? Like God has this whole thing planned out. <laughs> And, and so there's so many, a myriad of nuances, um, many of which we may miss because we're, we're trying to, you know, spend an hour or so getting the overview of the dream. But God puts in all of the detail for a reason. Again, think of if you were scripting a film and you had to be, okay, we need a guy to be the dreamer. Who's he going to be? Well, let's pick that bald guy in the UK. He, he could be the guy, you know, well, why him? <laughs> yeah. Why not somebody else? If this mm -hmm. is about the United States, and again, it it just almost feels like with a lot of your dreams, Ash, there's almost a assumption that it's more about the U.S. than it is about the U.K. Mm. Yeah. So it's interesting, especially now this week, the news that's coming out of London. Um, it's like, wow. Yeah. Something's yep. going on um yeah i would say we've had an unwelcomed visitor uh approach us this week um i will leave you to do your digging on the, on that front but shall we say a pharaoh has turned up knocking at number 10 really yeah, yeah. I, d I don't keep up with the news so huh. nor do i but this just come across that yeah come across yeah, my you feet, just, and i was like oh, mm -hmm. what is what is that, that doing is a uh, figure from the u.s too yeah yeah that's true yeah hmm. well did you see the announcements about the royal family today no i you know again unverified i don't know what i believe but there's documents on twitter saying the king is dead really yeah what wow and there was all a light on twitter x whatever yesterday with the royal court family whatever put the bbc and the news media on notice that a big announcement is forthcoming right like wh why do they do that and most of the time they don't do that a lot of time it's rumor and conjecture so they're either setting up a psyop or they're telling you they're about to tell you something why do they do that because it gets people prepared i guess for bad news or whatever but there's just a whole lot of weirdness that's happening at the highest level, certainly in America, but also in the UK. So it's interesting that there's the UK-US connection in this dream. It's also interesting that if you go back to 1913 and the roots of the Federal Reserve, a big part of that was from the UK. Mm -hmm. And then that goes back mm -hmm. to even the Act of 1871. I know more about 1913 than I do 1871. I can neither confirm nor deny what people say about the act of 1871. I'm just say I haven't been satisfied that what people's theories are about, okay. you know, basically the foreign bankers took over the U S in 1871. <laughs> that could be the case. Um, and I'm ignorant of it, but when you, because it's come up in other dreams, when you go back and you read the actual original legislation, it looks like just a charter for the city of DC. 
<laughs> Either way, one of the facts that we do know is there's three sovereign non-state entities that we know of in the world. One is the Vatican, two is London. It's not actually called London, it's called the Crown. And when people say the Crown, they think they mean the royal family, they do not. Mm -hmm. They mean the people that are really in charge of England. It is absolutely 100% not the royal family. And I don't know that it has ever been. That's a whole facade for the people of England who love to obsess over the prince and the queen. And, and it's doing its job because people care more about what the queen is wearing or whatever than about what's really happening in the world. And what it is, is it's the global banking cabal of central bankers that's centered in London. And then, of course, Washington, D.C., and so the other thought that I had took me back to another dream that we got. And the dream started out with, with uh, um, it was approaching midnight on an overcast evening. And my head exploded because I'm like, does anybody have any idea what that means? So approaching midnight is the idea of the doomsday clock. Mm -hmm. And when did it get to midnight? And the closest it ever got to midnight, at least when I looked it up at the time, was 90 seconds to midnight. And that was on January 20th of 2020. And mm -hmm. they said that was because um, Trump was saber rattling against North Korea and we were closer. So the doomsday clock came out, I believe it was after the Cuban Missile Crisis, where they okay. right around that time. Now, maybe it was before it was in the 50s where they wanted to be able to measure how close we were to complete nuclear annihilation in the world. Mm -hmm. They've since altered it to now be about global warming and how close the earth is to expiring. And they've wokeified the doomsday <laughs> clock, which is the dumbest thing on the That's planet. That's so but, sad. So sad. But when Trump was in <laughs> office, they tried to make it about Trump. And on January 20th of 2020, it was 90 seconds to midnight, which is the closest it's ever been. January 20th was also the first case of coronavirus in the United States, which means really? they released the bioweapon, yeah. which I think is interesting. But <clears throat> overcast evening, if, you, if you're familiar with Operation Paperclip, mm -hmm. where we brought over like 16, 18, some untold number of Nazis mm -hmm. who were known war criminals, who were in the upper echelon of, of uh, the Nazi regime, and who were uh, members of the SS and the SA. Some were even tried at Nuremberg, com um, convicted, did 10 years, and then we brought them to the US. Before it was called Operation Paperclip, it was called Project Overcast. Huh. And so the idea of an overcast evening means God was gonna set straight or even what happened with the Nazi infusion into the United States mm -hmm. after the after what was happening um with the nazis coming over to the united states and you know the whole thing with uh operation paperclip but also with um with the doomsday clock kind of the okay. two of those mixed together and that's just okay. in those few words you know, so the idea that you have two black cars, it's a dark and dangerous place. Mm -hmm. um, the cars are black. You're talking about uh, potentially uh, not necessarily a presidential motorcade, but it could it has pres presidential overtones. Mm -hmm. um, somebody that may be a former president, um, not in a motorcade, but somebody of very great importance that people don't want us to know who they is, is who they are. That's why they're in blacked out windows and a blacked out vehicle, mm -hmm. um, a Cadillac. If you know the history of the Cadillacs um, related to some of uh, uh, the cars, I think presidential vehicles as well, potentially um, there's just a lot there, but it, so it struck me right at the beginning and you set it up and it sounded like a movie. Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting because this dream goes on to describe a war in Washington where there's literally drums bopping, drums, bombs dropping, not drums, <laughs> bombs, <laughs> bombs dropping in, in, um, in DC, you know? And so this, this whole idea of a black night sky, um, it was dark, it was cloudy, it was dangerous. Um, there was really some interesting things that were happening. And then you're seeing the one car, you're seeing the other in the other lane, uh, the outside lane. 
Um, and then you have the water spraying off the wheels. You just have all of this imagery, like mm -hmm. you said, almost like a movie that's happening. The government Cadillac, the how you're positioned up, and then you go down and then through the windshield and then enter the car. And then you see the passenger. Um, who? What was the passenger's name again? Robbie Coltrane. Robbie Coltrane. For some reason, I don't know who that is, but. I didn't either, but I looked him up, and he's very chubby. Chubby. Yeah. I, th I think he's. I think he's passed away. Actually, I think. He oh, died okay. Not, not that recently. Um, oh, okay. A year, a year or two ago. Okay. All right. Um, so, yeah. And so then it, the the driver was a woman that was kind of flipping back and forth, almost shape shifting between J Lo and Oprah. Mm, yeah. But then, when she gets out of the car, she's somebody. There's somebody else. Which is so interesting. Will you think less of me if I see this scene with the fat man and the woman running up the incline and they can't breathe? Because I'm like, you know, <laughs> sorry, but that no. just cracks me up. So no, what, that, what that says to me is a sure hit, something misfired. And now they're this, the way is really steep for them to get yeah. to their objective suddenly you know tables have turned somewhere something happened here um, well i i love how you said you know they're they're it's almost like they're swimming upstream they're running up a hill they're completely out of shape and what's happening is they're running out of breath <laughs> so when you think of actors when you think of political leaders when you think of attorneys in government people like that those are people that literally make their living talking and so you think mm -hmm. of a defense attorney or a prosecutor or a politician, mm -hmm. if they run out of breath, then their political life is over if they can't mm -hmm. talk, you know, so it's the idea that they're running up this hill, which doesn't facilitate proper breathing to begin with, you know, so it's the whole idea they're running out of breath because of exertion, because it's all done in their own strength, right? And so now they're winded and they don't have the breath. And again, think of so many verses that talks about um, like the, the body, the, the valley of dry bones, you know, mm -hmm. the breath of God, it, 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 the breath of God didn't create the figures, the human beings. Um, but once they stood up and they had all the muscle and the tissue and the skin and everything, they still were kind of this mummified state until the breath of God blew in them and gave them life. And so if you look at it as the life-giving breath of God and or the anointing to do what God's called you to do, if you're running out of breath, it means you don't have that. Mm -hmm. And so that would be very concerning, especially for, say, a singer or an actor or a politician slash somebody in government. Mm -hmm. so I think that's really... An attorney, you know, they got to mm -hmm. talk a lot, you know. Right. Right. Yeah. And then what came to me, what they were sitting against this very thick, bushy tree. And bushy. I thought, well, that's interesting to describe mm -hmm. it as a bushy tree. And immediately I thought of bush. And then I thought, okay, they, they're in trouble, but they are, had they've come to lean against what we would call mm, globalist, maybe leadership types. Um, that's really interesting. I didn't hear that, but I love that bushy tree thing, um, you know, because it, it it relates not only to George W., but it relates to senior, mm -hmm. you know, 41 and 43 both. But <clears throat> I, you know, I tend to think of, and I served under both of them. Um, I was in the first Persian Gulf War when senior was, uh, president and when we you know the uh, the liberation of kuwait so that was interesting yeah. but i was a rescue worker at ground zero when george w actually came down he was there literally on another side of the rubble that i was and i didn't even know he was there he was literally a couple hundred feet away where he mm. was yelling with the bullhorn can you hear me well they're all they're gonna hear from all of us soon and everybody cheered and and mm -hmm. that moment was literally just i was on the other side and so it was it was interesting that um especially when you go down 
rabbit holes. It's hard to find what's really true in related r relating to that. But you talk about a hit. That was a hit of several thousand people. Yeah. yeah. And very, very unlikely that that's going to be proven to be an unfortunate accident. <laughs> you yeah. know, so the idea of we started with JFK and then we were talking about like the end of World War II mm -hmm. and then moving into <laughs> some of the other things that were unfolding, particularly the idea of the Nazis. And now we're back in talking about the Bushes, which this goes all the way back to mm -hmm. Prescott. It goes to World War mm -hmm. II. Yeah, um, both it obviously does. George H. W. Um, in 46 was where they got their start. Um, Trump was born in 46. Um, JFK, I think, ran for Congress for the first time in 46. Uh, so it's just interesting that there's the Kennedys, the Bushes, um, and then these actors, J-Lo, Oprah, Robbie, um, some of these others that are here. I, I feel like even Chris Christie, I feel like there's the They're shifting. They're all playing a part. Yeah. Yeah, the shifting of identities is really interesting when it starts with Oprah and J-Lo. Mm -hmm. So what do we know about J-Lo? J-Lo has her own brand. She's a well-known singer. She's more than a singer. She's an icon. Um, she's, you know, a New York icon. Um, but then you look at Oprah and it's a level of success that's different, you know, from mm -hmm. Chicago. So a different place, <laughs> another um you know, woman of color that, that, uh, you know, did amazing as far as we're told. Um, but somebody of more power than just a singer, even an iconic singer, mm -hmm. uh, somebody that wields a lot more money. And, and of course, a billionaire, more money, more power. Um, yeah. very likely, at least our impression is that very likely she's involved in, some of the things that like the world economic forum kind of level, you know, yeah. with, with Soros or beyond, um, you know, so it's interesting that it goes from an iconic singer to an iconic businesswoman who also owns a network um, in broadcasting. Then it goes to somebody that is unprecedented, potentially they're trying to set her up to be unprecedented as having a voice in government. Um, and probably the thing that she will end up being most known for will not be her career to this point, but will be the moment that she's in right now. And so it's not like, oh, well, you were such a good politician. It's like, no, you're known for like if you become a Supreme Court justice and then you overturn Roe v. v. Wade, like you're known for that. You could have been a judge for 40 years and nobody can name one other case you did, but yeah. they know you for that. And so she's mm -hmm. going to have, I believe, that kind of a legacy um, just because the people that she's in bed with and the people that she's playing against are formidable opponents. <laughs> the play on words was awesome john that she's We're in bed with in bed with yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was <laughs> wasn't thinking about that one but i uh, knew you weren't <laughs> yeah. it applies <laughs> <laughs> and then the guy robbie coltrane to chris christie chris christie is a presidential candidate um was a presidential candidate i don't think it was the first time he ran for office um no. i don't think he's in better shape than we knew him last time um trump has not been kind to that guy <laughs> at all but it's kind of funny just to watch how that whole thing plays out and why he continues to subject himself to um, almost the humiliation of running for president against somebody like Trump. I mean, yeah. you wonder if if it's not even scripted, if it's just not part of a clown show. Mm -hmm. um, not to take anything away from Chris Christie. I don't know that there's anything to take away. Like, you're just, who is this guy that thinks, like, are you kidding me? Like, dude, why would you think that you even have a shot at what you aspire to be it's just you know and again i'm not trying to be mean but i just know you know and i do think he represents 
someone that's connected to FW. Rather, you know, there's got to be some tie-ins there, but. Uh, well, he's definitely known as somebody that's got a chip on his shoulder for Trump. Like a chip on his shoulder would, I, I would say, probably outright hatred, if not beyond that. And 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 because he's been humiliated, if if it is as we think that it's not a game and it's not all for show, um, man, that guy has really really taken some lumps, even for a guy being from Jersey. But beyond that, you know, like <clears throat> that's a lot. That's just a lot. You said so something really it's... interesting. I just picked up on. You said running. Both of them were running up this incline, mm -hmm. being mm -hmm. out of breath. Wow. Both of them, and also when you were talking about Jenna, Jennifer Lopez and and Oprah, I heard from the block. What does F W mm -hmm. kind too. of come across as oh, yeah. like someone from the block? Mm -hmm. Jenny on the block. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, was I think a that. clue is when the man is he's focusing on his rifle. But he says to her, yes, my love. Now that yeah, indicates that was a relationship too. to me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's really interesting because yeah. um, I don't know how that applies to Chris Christie. But the, the more that I look at this, the more that I think that the FW at the end could legitimately have a tie-in to Chris Christie. Let, let me say this. And again, I'm Possibly. not trying to be mean. I just, the level of frustration and outright hatred that I've seen displayed by Chris mm -hmm. Christie publicly, again, if it's not all a joke that they're just trying to sigh up the American public, which I don't trust the media at all categorically in any situation anymore whatsoever. Like if their lips are moving, they're lying, period. That's kind of my stance. And it served me pretty well. I don't think I've been wrong <laughs> once taking that stand. Um, <clears throat> but when we're looking at this, we're looking at, you know, what is his position and what is he what is he doing? This guy, he's clearly not a main player. He's like a side player. He's a big person, so he can have, have a big personality. He takes up a lot of space, and he's got a lot of hot air, in my opinion. And you hear the dogs barking. You hear the preparation for the rifle, the dogs barking and being out of breath, breathing heavy. All of these things are just... You know, the dogs nipping at your heels. It's it's what the Bible calls the pursuit of low debar. It's a chasing after the wind. Mm -hmm. They're they're and that's what they're doing. They're running uphill trying to catch their breath, which is not how you try to catch your breath. They're literally chasing after the wind, which means it's a big nothing burger. It's all gonna end up being not fruitful for them and probably have very dire consequences in their life because they've gone down this road to to either make fun of or try to humiliate in some way or just to hate on um Trump um and 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 again the feeling that I get is that they're just so far out of their league they're so far outmatched uh -huh. um you know they've deluded themselves to believe that oh well we could do that. and it's just like bro like <laughs> no you know uh, so the, inc that the incline the level the level that they're going up is too high, it's too elevated. The elevation, the lack of oxygen I just got. And they're looking for sanctuary underneath the bushy tree. I wonder if there is a both connection to that bush e tree somewhere financially or in past political history running. Interesting. Runnings. Funding, maybe. Might be something mm -hmm. for you guys to, to go and do your research on. Yeah, yeah Chris, I wouldn't I wouldn't doubt a bit if there's a tie between Chris Christie and the Bushes. Yeah. OK, like I wouldn't doubt that a bit. I think think of Jeb. Think didn't of, he serve one of the Bushes? He might have. I don't know. That's a really good question. Yeah, I did look him up, but I was getting him and another uh, governor mixed up in dreams and. <laughs> finally got it straightened out but <laughs> wow that's awesome dog's barking he's fiddling with his rifle and he's trying to be funny um to me that describes chris christie he's always trying to say things that are like lead balloons but he's trying to either 
do comebacks and be Trump. And, you know, it's, it's interesting how much I'm ragging on this dude, because I typically don't, I try to be very respectful and I just am feeling no love for this guy mm -hmm. in this stream at all. I'm okay. just like, here you go. He later worked for the 2000 presidential campaign of George W. Bush. Wow. After Bush became president, he appointed Christie U.S. Attorney for New Jersey. U.S. So there, Attorney. There is a tie. There is a tie. That's interesting. Yeah. Huh. Not only a tie, but a potential partnership with FW. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm least the the winkings of it wow wow yeah uh, do you know i just heard the word innuendo hmm. between between fw and cc okay oh. in the south that's where the bird flies right innuendo <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'll let you catch your breath on that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is interesting. And both again underneath a tree looking for sanctuary. Mm -hmm. Sanctuary. Yeah. Tree sanctuary. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's really interesting too. You know, back to Nebuchadnezzar's dream in Daniel 2, the dream of the tree. Uh, no, Daniel 4, the dream of the tree. Yeah. And so um trees being high level leaders but particularly not just like a senator like an executive like a king like somebody that rules a country you know so sitting under a bushy tree to me i also hear um the burning bush you mm -hmm. know so literally something that catches on fire that becomes a miraculous sign but is not consumed you know and then a calling to go back to a former king or a pharaoh and say, let my people go. There's just a whole lot with the bushy tree. Like there's several metaphors mixed into that. That's pretty, pretty interesting. Okay. Yeah. I think there's some good news in this with the words bleed out. Now, I don't wish harm to anybody, but it sounds like the case that has been built up is just going to bleed out. I got that impression too. Yeah, nothing left. Just like, you know what? We're not even going to put it out of its misery. We're just going to watch it ooze on the street. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, you know, there's something really interesting too, Diana, um, on the words that were spoken. You know, and I, I try not to pay a, too much attention to the words that were spoken because I think that's a classic mistake a lot of people make when they do dream interpretation, especially if they're a prophet, because what they feel is most important is what's said in a dream because they're, you know, they're spoken <laughs> word kind of people. Yeah. And so they can have the most <laughs> incredible imagery, but if there's a word said, then they focus on the word and the whole message <laughs> is about the word. And I don't want it to become about the word, but I'm kind of the opposite. I kind of disregard a lot of what's said and I go after the figurative part in the imagery, but can you refresh us our memory on everything that is said, like say it word for word. Sure. So, so are we talking about when um, the two characters are underneath the tree? No, the whole dream. Didn't whole it start dream. out with, are you ready to do this? Yep. So uh, let me just get there. So that was her to him in the car. Are you ready to do this? So the man is in a focused tone, says, are you ready to do this? Uh -huh. The woman looking straight ahead with both hands on the steering wheel says, yes. And then I hear the engine of the car speed up. So that's the first interaction. Okay. And then the second one was when he was fixing the rifle and he was trying to be funny, right? Yeah. So with very dry humor, again, the man is doing something with a rifle and says, I can't believe you messed this up to the woman. He's trying to frantically do something with his rifle while also trying to talk and take the seriousness out of the situation. 
The woman isn't breathing, as heavy as the man, but I can see she is trying to keep as calm as possible, but I know that she is really panicking inside. And now this is the next thing spoken. Mm -hmm. In a direct voice, she is going through questions with the man, checking he has certain things ready and knows what the plan is, like checking off a list. She then says, make sure we direct them this way so we have a clear firing point. The man still focused on readying his rifle responds in a calm but direct tone. Yes, my love, if they come this way, we are all in trouble. Okay, that, that confused me a little bit because she's saying they need to come this way. And he's saying if they do, we're all in trouble. And I believe when he said that, I think he wasn't just talking about both of them. I think he's talking about the one searching for him as well, which means okay. everybody. And when I heard that, I get this oppression that this is going to be like a whole infrastructure or something, mm. like a whole foundation or something, whether that's governmental, whether that's a, a, a nation, whether that's an organization, whether that's a plan, a system, whatever it is, everybody is in trouble if it doesn't go the way that they have planned this. Wow. So yeah. that's what I got from it. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Carry on. Um, Was sorry, that it? John, you... No, there's more. Um, so I'm leaning down behind the tree. Lead so, out. Uh, so yeah. So the sound of men and dogs are becoming louder and clearer. The man then says, looking at the woman, as there is a flash of light, are you ready to bump uglies and take these F word out? There is no response from the woman. She looks over, he looks over at her quickly, then focuses on his rifle again, then hear the word bleed out come from the bottom of the incline. So the ones that are searching, the men that are communicating with the dogs at the bottom with the searchlights, they I hear the word come from their direction, say bleed out, like someone's calling it, like they found. A, a blood trail and then they're like bleed out that's what i heard so the only top shots that we know definitively were fired were fired when they were still in the car on the highway right yeah two two uh two gunshots in and then an succession. exchange boom boom yeah, yeah and then an exchange of gunfire and then at the end of the dream so one at the beginning and then one at the end of the dream a single shot so the exchange of gunfire was on the road. And then when was the last gunshot? Was that before uh, they said bleed out? So that was after. after. When literally, so the man, Chris Christie character, has done whatever he's doing with the rifle. He points it down. And then oh, I am gosh. following from the top, the buttstock of the rifle, all the way down. And I'm following it to the end from a side view. So I'm going down. And as I, I continue going down, so there's nothing but the, the background in front of me, which is the incline coming down. It's dark. I can still like hear the road. So there's, mm -hmm. there's traffic going across it. And then from my left, real close, so like body. So I would say like this close, if this was the body of a dog running from left to right, come across me, I hear their collars running and I hear them like as they run as they're like frantically running up the incline. And then I hear one gunshot and that's the end. Yeah, that's really, really interesting because if you look at this practically as being a real scenario, it doesn't jive, you know? Mm. First of all, the two shots fired on the freeway and then the exchange of fire, that's interesting. But by that point, you got helicopters, you got <laughs> SWAT, you got, you know, and then even the exchange of words, um, are you ready to do this? Um, I can't believe you messed this up. Uh, yes, my love, you know, make sure that, um, you know, make sure that they're directed this way for a clear shot. Yes, my love, and then bleed out. Um, I, to me, I think it's clear that they're not talking about a real situation. Like this sounds like a hit 
as well as it could be a level of uh, targeted hit at a political figure. You know, mm -hmm. we all know what that word is. So, um, contains two donkeys. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> um, somebody actually said that in a, in a dream recently. It came up, and that's what I heard was ass ass in nation oh and my goodness like, mm. is that talking about the election is that talking about <laughs> who's gonna be by the time we actually get to vote who's gonna be like and there's a dream that came out before the last election that was pretty pretty interesting related to that kind of stuff and it was two leaders that were both getting taken out at the same time and um both notable people um but yeah i two of the biggest takeaways for me are the juxtaposition of the woman figure and the man figure yeah. the woman figure that morphs from j-lo to oprah and into fw mm -hmm. the man figure that goes from robbie coltrane into chris christie um i just think it's really interesting how it evokes a variety of different people. And again, if you're looking at central casting, who is this person that we're going to put in this place and why? Because everything is done for a reason. You know, and um, I don't think of Oprah and even J-Lo on the same level as FW. I'd see FW being way higher in both notoriety and fame and wealth than either two of those, though they're pretty big heavy hitters. Um, Robbie Coltrane, I, I don't know. I don't think he's probably, most actors are nowhere close to being a billionaire. There's very, very few billionaire actors. Um, Oprah would be one of them. Um, but, and then Chris Christie, uh, you know, it, it's hard to, define a metrics in which you define his life as being successful in my opinion and gosh yeah. i sound so harsh i'm not trying to sound harsh i i just feel like these are some of the people in psalm 2 when it says god laughs at them i feel like this is that crowd yeah i mean i've never said anything like that before diana i've never <laughs> you know i i don't blatantly openly ridicule people on your channel very often you know I'm just like <laughs> i just have no love for the yeah. people here and it's yeah. almost man they're doing really dumb stuff and for what what what, what mm -hmm. do you think you're going to achieve like guys you know just quit but, but when Retire. you're desperate you will do dumb things because well you know it's it's almost like it's not even about a reward it's about the fact that they have to cover the lie to keep yeah. their life yeah. because of how entangled and enmeshed they are in whatever evil is going on the dark and the the dangerous that's exactly mm -hmm. what this is about it's about these figures that have been sort of mysterious and their time is done and now shots are being fired and somebody's bleeding out. And all we know is it's the woman that slumped over and, um, you know, the guy could hardly even get up to the top of the hill. Like he's certainly not going to escape anywhere quick. Like <laughs> Diana busts up left. <laughs> like this hill is his last stand, right? He ain't yeah. going. Mm -hmm. He's not getting away. He knows it. Yeah. To me, this is the desperation of the left. Mm -hmm. This is the absolute, they're out of their minds, crazy, realizing that they don't have a prayer to win. Like they yeah. just they have no hope whatsoever at all. They thought their influence, they thought their money, they thought the mm -hmm. organizations internationally, their positioning in the global narrative, mm -hmm. they thought all of the blackmail things that they did, mm -hmm. that it was going to keep them safe. And now they're like, there is nowhere to hide. Yeah. No matter of money, no amount of positioning is going to buy them out and mm -hmm. they're going to be exposed for the whole world to see and they will never recover their reputation or probably their life ever again. It's a really desperate situation. Yeah. 
I just want to share something with you guys. The Lord just put in my head, nuns on the run. And I was like, nuns on the what? run. Nuns on the run. <laughs> I just checked it. Robbie Coltrane is in a movie called Nuns on the Run. No. What? Nuns on the Run. Yes. Were they fake nuns? <laughs> From what I can see. It had to be. They go on, like I'm I'm just getting like little like a little snippet of a trailer okay. here. Okay. I see them, I see them both. I see Robbie Coltrane holding a pistol, holding a gun, pointing it at someone. Okay. You guys need to go uh, go and watch this. Oh my goodness. Nuns Gosh, that's on the incredible. Run. Nuns on the run. Wow. So they, sounds like some bad guys disguise themselves as nuns to get out of a desperate situation. I mean, that would be my guess. Yeah. Well, that applies to this dream. Yeah, that's really <laughs> interesting. Trying to look upright on the yeah. side of the law. Yeah. You know, I feel like Hill is Capitol Hill. Oh. Ah. I feel like um, there are some decisions going to be made that, and, and there's already FW, I think, aren't they investigating that whole situation from a congressional level already? I thought I, Jim Jordan was really- I saw a, a li someone trying to link her to some planners of something very nefarious that went down on a January day, hmm. maybe the 6th of January. Yeah. Hmm. That there may be a link there. I don't know. That's just something I read and yeah. headline that went by. Well, I feel like that's going to be their last stand and it's not going to be like in Congress. It's going to be like a congressional hearing. It's going to be, they're going to be in some serious, serious trouble. Okay. And that's why they're going to try to hide behind the bushy tree. Mm -hmm. They're going to try to use former presidential uh, weight to be able to try to bail them out. And it's just not going to be enough. Hmm. You know, and then the whole bleed out thing is like the idea of, and, and I feel like part of this is in the grand scheme of things, it's by design. You know, there's the whole idea that there's a group of good people that are wanting to turn things around. Some people call them white hats or whatever, people that know what's going on. And then there's the evil that exists. And they say that they're making calculated moves so people can digest what's happening. And mm -hmm. that's like the whole idea of, wasn't it just that case that the judge dismissed like half the charges? I am not sure. I just... I think it was yeah. the maybe it was either the New York or the Atlanta case. Yeah, I'm not sure about and that. Just, just missed like half the charges. And then somebody said he's going to dismiss them all. But again, it's like telegraphing what you're going to do because gotcha. they don't want to shock the public where everybody comes out. And, you know, and, and so that's the whole idea of bleed out. It's like it's going to mm. end up being there's going to be no life. In whatever the scheme was, there's going to be no life in it at the end. What just hit me about this dream is the focus totally shifted from the one they were attacking to them. The spotlight is on them. Mm. The spot. Yeah, because they Flash. they were following mm. the the lead vehicle, right? Which is uh -huh. sort of the headlights following that. Yeah, they exchanged the the conflict. Uh -huh. then it's like going the other way <laughs> so now they're being followed they're being chased yeah the spotlight again the search like wow like roadrunner coyote thing you know mm. yeah so now they're running they're trying to get up a hill and i feel like the turnaround moment is when that flash that little bit of light comes by and there's like that brief exposure and then you see her slump over and you're like she's gone. The only thing this guy can do is try to get his rifle ready and get off one mm -hmm. shot in the dark at something, you know, but again, it's like yeah. shooting at the air. Yeah. You know, the other thing that, that really strikes me um, is there's uh and I've told you both, I think about this offline, probably there's a well-known prophet that had a dream that had to do with the white house garage Mm -hmm. And it took me down a path because 
when he saw I had this dream, you know, a couple of days ago, and I immediately thought, no, you didn't. You had a Wednesday and Wednesday happened to be the 60th anniversary of the JFK assassination. And I asked the guy and he was like, yeah, you're right. And I'm like, do you know what Wednesday was? No, I, I don't have any idea. It's the 60th anniversary of the most important thing that's happened in a presidential vehicle, mm -hmm. you know, um, but I'm not going to decode that whole thing for you, though. I do want to get that decode out because it's absolutely fascinating. But in the midst of decoding that dream, God asked me the question, who's the woman behind the JFK assassination? And I'm like, what are you talking about, God? Like, there's no woman behind the J. And so I actually started doing research. And there was a book that just came out like three weeks prior to the release of that dream hmm. that ties a woman to being the CIA's head of their assassinations program from 1960 to 64. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so it's interesting because the guy that had the dream um, in, in the dream was also Jezebel and it was about Jezebel, but God asked me who was Jezebel really? And if you go back and you do the research, you know, Jezebel was, was, um, Ahab's wife, you know, and Ahab was king and Ahab wanted neighbor's vineyard. And he said, sell it to me. And he said, no. And so he went to bed and pouted. And so his wife came in, what's wrong with you? You're the king, get out of bed. Well, you want to sell me his vineyard? I'll take care of it. And then she sets up this conspiracy to invite neighbor over to accuse him of blasphemy, to have him go out and stoned and killed, not by her hand, but she was driving and you have a woman driver in the midst of this hit mm. attempting to take out somebody that we feel could be presidential level, though it's not revealed in the dream definitively who it is. Mm -hmm. But there's an idea to make a hit on that affects literally the destinies of nations on the executive administration level. And it's a woman that's driving. It's also the woman that gets taken out. Yeah. Yeah. And I believe that that not only is it exposure of what's happening related to the Trump indictments, I feel like it's an opportunity for the Ecclesia to say, you can take out Jezebel because he's revealing roots and altars and thrones. Mm -hmm. It's not about praying anymore. I'm, I'm so like, I, I won't rant, I promise, but I'm so fun <laughs> with people saying, we need to just pray. We need to pray more often. We need to get more people to pray. We need everybody to sign up on a list to pray. We need to pray and fast. We need to pray and fast more. We, the Guys, like we've been doing this forever. What we need is we need strategy. We need the strategy mm -hmm. of heaven. If you look at, you know, so many times in scripture, they marched, they prepared for war, they put on their regalia, they marched out. And then they said, you know, Jehoshaphat, God, we, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. But they were ready to get slaughtered in the battle. Mm -hmm. And then God acts. And we think if we can just pray, we can absolve ourselves of any responsibility to act. And I believe God is waiting for us to act in this yes. nation. And it's not Absolutely. defending people's reputation on Twitter. It's not fighting amongst ourselves <laughs> in the church on Facebook. It's not doing another prophetic conference, which we've done about a billion of those. It's what are we going, what are we willing to risk? You know, they overcame him by the wow. blood of the lamb, which is the work he's already done. The mm -hmm. word of their testimony, which means they spoke out yeah. and they spoke out loudly and they did not love their lives. Mm -hmm even unto death. Wow. Where are those people? Because that's the remnant. Yeah, It's not most of the church. It's not you most can. of the pastors. It's not most of the prophetic leaders or most of these people who feel the need to argue about their title of an apostle. What it is, <laughs> is who is willing to act to get our nation back? And it was a few Back in 1776, it was a few, it was a mm -hmm. very few and they paid a price for it. Yeah. And, all throughout scripture, I don't know why we think it's different now, but we think we're just going to pray and God is going to spring. I call it pixie dust theory. God is going to sprinkle pixie dust <laughs> on the country and we're all going to go, you know, sit around a circle, hold hands and sing kumbaya and the economy is going to be restored and all the evil people are going to mm. die. Or, like, yeah. What do we think is going to happen? Like it's never happened in scripture at all, ever. He's always done something through 
the children, through the people, like you said with Jehoshaphat. Mm -hmm. Well, the people got that instruction, but they went out to meet the enemy. Yes. There was a going out. They didn't stay in the walls and go, oh, all right, well, Lord, you're just going to go ahead. No, they went out. Mm -hmm. They were prepared to fight. Mm -hmm. They stood there ready to go, right, whatever the outcome, yeah. we're here, we're ready to go. Yeah. And this is it's exactly the same way with Abijah it's the, and, and Jeroboam. It's the same constantly when you look at the New Testament where the disciples turned into prophets. They went out. Paul went out into these other countries, into these other islands and knew what was coming his way because he already experienced it because he was the opposite side of that. He was the one that was quite willing to kill other people christians to take them out mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so he knew what was going on he didn't even need the holy spirit for that but yet obviously he was partnered with him and of course they tried to kill him they literally tried killing him so, but he was willing to go through that and he went from the bottom or what we could say low rank um governmental or community uh synagogue governmental infrastructure mm -hmm. all the way up to caesar all the way up there and everything in between yeah so we have to we have to understand it's, there's different levels of society that we can all impact each and every one of us and like john said it's called a remnant for a reason not everybody's willing to do this there's a difference between not knowing and knowing but once you know are you willing to go <laughs> and say here i am lord use me when david said to the lord he said shall i go up and meet them he was getting strategy he mm -hmm. was getting the tactics the download yes but guess what the lord didn't say yeah you go up and meet them but i'm gonna go and destroy them before you get there like there yeah. was not he had to go yeah. and use his faith and act on it mm -hmm. and go and use the instruction to download the strategy that he was given the same with joshua you see it with him mm -hmm. and it's exactly the same with the disciples with jesus himself you yeah. see it all the way through mm -hmm. the word so i'm sorry that i went into preach mode but oh. the holy spirit just comes through good again. preach no worry and I, I was just going to mention in the scene in the Old Testament where they're going out to meet that overwhelming army, it was the worshipers who had the most guts. They went first. They had no weapons. They just had their worship and their faith. And that is what we're all called to do too. Worship before we see the victory, because we truly believe that what God said is going to come to pass and so we march out shouting his name. It's just like Jericho. They let the worshipers go out first. They had the strategy. They met with the mm -hmm. angel. Joshua met with the angel. Whose side are you on? Uh, yeah. I've come as that. <laughs> Whose side are you on, dude? You know, I love that. But he's like, here's the strategy. Here's what you're going to do. And that yeah. that's, why, that's why I do what I do. That's why we mm -hmm. do like the spiritual intelligence mentorship is why we run into people constantly that are like, I wish I could do something. There is something you can do. You can actually become an Intel agent, an Intel analyst, mm -hmm. what's happening in the active spiritual war that we are fighting in this nation. And it's not to just sit back and pray. And it's not, you're not relegated to holding a tambourine in church. Like you can literally be one of the select few that God uses in this capacity to decode things like the incredible dreams that both Diana and Ash are having. And that's why, you know, we're starting another uh, spiritual intelligence mentorship in April. Um, and I will have John's information will be in the description box, box, as well as Ashes, where you can find both of them and information on the next spiritual intelligence mentorship that John will be doing. I think the most important thing, at least from my perspective, that I can do right now is to train people to be able to decipher the battle strategies. You don't send a bat. People are always like, well, why doesn't God just tell us? Well, really, would you get on the horn and just tell them to bomb Tokyo in World War II? No, you wouldn't. You send things through coded message because there's mm -hmm. a real enemy that can really intercept. That's and right. we want the element of surprise. And so if you really go down that rabbit hole that dreams are intelligence, 
you start thinking entirely differently and you want to be one of the few. You know, it was even at Bletchley Park, but also in the United States. It was one of them was um, the woman who smashed the codes was a woman with a pad of paper and a pencil. She hacked Enigma because she understood language patterns, sat in a windowless room and hacked the Enigma machine. Didn't have one, didn't know what, how many dials and how many turns. And, you know, you, you look at what Turing did, which was amazing, inventing the computer. But this lady, Elizabeth, might have been Walker, Elizabeth Smith or Elizabeth Walker. You can actually watch that. I both read the book, The Woman Who Smashed the Codes, and there's a documentary on it. And she's considered the mother of the NSA. And she was just a, you know, we have so many people that are just like little old ladies. They're just grandmas, they're moms, they love God. And certainly there's a place for men too, but don't let anybody in the body of Christ tell you that you can't be on the front lines of the war of what's happening. So if you're tired of sitting back and watching the news or looking at your telegram group and feeling helpless and yeah, you're part of the intercessors for America or whatever. And we, we honor those prayer movements and all of that. But what we need right now is decoders because the people that are fighting on the front lines, including people running for office, including people filing lawsuits, including people in the military, including governors of states like Texas that are going up against the administration, they are desperate right now for strategies of how do we win against mm -hmm. this evil that's been uncovered in our land. And we can be the ones that get to decode the messages to to be able to put that information in people's hands. Yeah. That's really important. Also, That's why we do shows well. like this. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's important as well that you guys get this, that it's, it's about the, the world and the impacts that your download, what the Lord's trusted you with can impact that. But I'm going to share a quick testimony. Mm -hmm. I've had two dreams that I've, you know, interpreted with the Lord um the last 24 to 48 hours that have been sent through to through diana um, and directly through myself and in those dreams there was an action inter intelligible action summary where it gave instruction for the person to go and act on this information yes. it wasn't yes. just an interpretation there was guidelines for this right you need to press in with the Lord with this. Listen to what he's saying about this area, mm -hmm. what to do it here, and what direction, whether you choose this option or this option. And when you do that, look out for this. Look out mm -hmm. here. Listen for this. If that comes up, you know that's the right direction. You've got mm -hmm. these things. And again, like I, every time I hear the word nuance, I always hear Brother John's voice when it comes through that. And okay. it's because it's the... We hear the saying all the time, the devil's in the details. No, oh. God is in the details. And he's telling Amen. you, he's not using a prophet. He's not using an apostle or a pastor or an evangelist. He's telling you directly through the love language, because he's trusting you with this, that not only mm -hmm. with governmental or outside corporate dreams, but in your own life. And why? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will, Lord. He's telling me, if I'm giving you this information for you to strengthen and develop yourself, to come up higher and to be in a place and a position in your life, why would I be giving that to you? It's to benefit you. What happens if he's putting you in that place, that time, that position to get you into a stronger foundation so you have the muscles in the spirit, in the, in the language, in the intel, what you receive, for you to go out and serve others in the mm -hmm. intel community, in government, in your mm -hmm. school boards, in the medical field, in your nation. And it doesn't matter what nation. What happens if he's preparing your life to get you for where you can really make a big impact in contributing to this fight? Mm -hmm. Don't ignore your dreams. It's the one thing I have learned yes. for the last three years. Do yeah. not. Ignore yeah. your dreams. Even if you mm -hmm. can't remember all of it, get even yeah. one or two words down. Even if you think, well, there was more to the dream and I can't remember it, but I can only write these two words down. Mm -hmm. What happens if those two wa words are the keys of breaking that enigma machine? Mm -hmm. Just like John said. Mm -hmm. That's so really good, Ash. Really good. All right. We better wind this up and land it, guys. This has been amazing. 
Uh, yes, indeed. And thank our audience so much for joining us and for all your great comments and insights that you leave. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, Ash, maybe you can just close us out with prayer. Of course. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you, Lord, again for this time and for the congregation, for the, the family coming together. Lord, I ask you to inspire, to stir up like you did with David in his heart, in his soul, my brothers and sisters around the world that watch this, that they not just press in, but they dedicate, they sacrifice their time, their attention, their love, their, their, their discipline, Lord, and their focus on you in dreams, in visions, in the word, listening to the word, yes. calling out, saying, here I am, Father, use me, and then expecting you to show up, expecting you to deliver a message. And even if there is no understanding, that they do not lean on their own understanding, but lean on the fact and the trust that you sent them that message because you trust them to press in, to seek the glory of kings, because it's your glory to send something hidden for us to search out. And I thank you for it, Lord. I bless the audience. I bless the families and the hands of your work through them, that you position them in this time to go carry out orders, to go carry out their talents and to affect the enemy and decimate them in their mission statements. The Lord show me mission statements. There is a lot of you that are going to be entrusted with mission statements. And he's trusting you to carry those out. So I pray over success and victory in every mission carried out that is chosen to be carried out. And I give you the glory, the victory, the honor, and the praise, Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank, Thank you. you both for joining me. <laughs> this has Always been really, good. really good. <laughs> and Thanks until we see you, on. yeah. <laughs> Until we see you, audience again, may you be blessed with his peace, his great grace, and his great glory. Bye for now.